All right, for this second lab, uh, we're going to be doing a little bit more math on the, on the results. It's the same experiment, just making sure we can do a little bit more calculations on the slope of the line. So these are the two relationships you're going to be looking at for these standing waves. Wavelength is equal to the speed of the wave divided by the frequency. And that speed of the wave on the, on the string, or yeah, on the string, is equal to the square root of the tension of, of the string divided by the mass per unit length. That mu is the mass divided by the length of the string, as I showed in the videos uh, I've made. Okay, so here's the same setup where you have the vibrator that you can change the frequency of it, and you have a mass that's hanging off the string to set the tension. The mass here is 100 grams. Okay, and I can change the mass and I can change which chord I'm using. All right, and in the first experiment, you're going to select any combination of strings and hanging weights. So I, I selected chord number one and 100 grams. And then you're going to make a graph of the frequency versus the wavelength. Okay, and you're going to use that plot to find the wave speed. I'm going to give you a hint over here. If I look at the equation, how would I relate frequency and wavelength to get a straight line? They're not directly proportional. Okay, so I would have to, if I'm trying to have my wavelength on my y-axis, then my x variable here would be one divided by the frequency. So I'd have to plot one divided by the frequency on the x-axis and my wavelength, measured wavelength on the y-axis to get a straight line. And the slope of that line would be my velocity. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. So we're trying to use the graph to measure the velocity of that wave. Okay, so here I selected chord number one and 100 grams. And then when I hit play, okay, it's going to make a loud noise. Okay, I see it around 16. Yeah, around 16 hertz, I get my first harmonic. And if I click my tools, I'm going to put in my ruler. Okay. And I can see using the ruler that the length of that rope is one meter. And for the first harmonic, the first harmonic, the wavelength would be two times that length. All right. So for the first harmonic, my wavelength is two meters. And the measured frequency is around 16.3 hertz. Okay. So I would have two meters being the wavelength. 16.3 hertz is the frequency, but I'd have to do one divided by 16.3 to put into that column. And then I should get a graph. A linear graph. Okay, so actually one over frequency would be my x-axis and my wavelength would be my y-axis. Okay, and that should give me a straight line and hopefully the slope of that line would tell me the velocity. So I kind of gave you a hint on the first experiment just to get you going. Okay, now using that velocity that you measure, you can answer this question. What is the mass per unit length of the string? So go through all that. So using the slope, you got your wave speed. And then using that wave speed, you can do these calculations. So I want you to do that. Then you're going to complete experiment two, where you're going to look at the wave speed in the same string, but with different hanging masses. How does the weight affect the, waves, the, the wave speed? So I want you to go through that, answer the questions. And then, yeah, just keep following. You're just trying to look at how does weight affect the wave speed, okay, using that second formula, okay? And then when you're done all that, you can try to determine the mass of a mystery mass. This is the last little mini lab, okay? And that mystery mass is here, but you can only do it with chord number three. Can't remember how to, yeah, with chord number three. So you have to click on 200, get to chord number three, and then you can get to the mystery mass. And let's see if you can make a graph to determine what the mystery hanging weight is, okay? What that mass is based on other aspects of your graph. That's your bonus. Okay, good luck.